They were mankind's cosmic pioneers, boldly bound for where none had gone before. T-minus 10 minutes and counting, T-minus 10. Sky News host Darren Hinch was among the thousands of people at Cape Canaveral to witness the spectacular start to Apollo 11's momentous mission. Live broadcasting to dozens of Australian radio stations. When it took off, the actual waves of power hit you in the gut, like a baseball bat. You can probably hardly hear me, but there she goes, and it's pulling away from the tower by yelling, go, 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 you beautiful... I must admit one thing I admit now about that broadcast, and I almost dropped the F-bomb. I know that as long as I live, I am never going to see anything quite like this one. The Americans have really done it, I have to tell you that. As the smoke cleared at Cape Canaveral and Apollo 11 cleared our atmosphere, broadcasters began the tricky task of tracking a spacecraft on a five-day, 384,000-kilometre journey. Most used basic animations and Apollo models. You think it's very comfortable in there, gentlemen? Well, it's uh, standing in a 1G environment now, Frank, and uh, it gets a little tiring here. Of course, in orbit... The crew will be in zero G. On board the actual Apollo 11, the crew communicated with NASA through Australia based radio telescopes. The three main tracking stations for the mission, Madrid, Goldstone, and Honeysuckle Creek, all had capacity for television, but that wasn't their primary role. Their job was to monitor the telemetry information coming down about the astronauts' heart rates, data involving the equipment being used. And mid morning of July 21, 1969, touchdown. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. It landed earlier than expected. And due to technical problems with a US base, the tiny site at Honeysuckle Creek in remote southern New South Wales was tasked with getting the first steps on the moon into living rooms around the world. On board the, the lander there was a little microwave set up with the cameras attached. That was pushed up to Michael Collins, who was in the uh, orbiter, who was able to then microwave back to Australia. Those tracking stations, both Honeysuckle Creek, Goldstone and Parks, could pick up those pictures and then would send them on, in Australia's case, through to Telecom, who then pushed them to the ABC in Sydney. And it was the ABC in Sydney that distributed those pictures out to the rest of the world for everyone to enjoy. A moment enjoyed by 650 million people. That's one small step for man. The Parks radio telescope picked up the later stages of the live broadcast, which Australians saw a third of a second before the rest of the world. Even at the speed of light, radio signals take a little bit of time to get from one side of the Earth to the other. It means we saw it one third of a second before the rest of the planet live. The logistical challenge of broadcasting man's first steps on the moon was indeed immense. But the significance of Apollo 11's mission... Its impact on science, technology, politics and culture is, of course, immeasurable. Brent O'Halloran, Sky News.